Hey guys, before we move off this bot setup, we're going to do a bit of housekeeping to keep things tidy and give the player a bit of direction in the level. Uh, the only thing that I've changed here is I've added a camera into the level and I've got it focusing on these two doors. These two doors are now shut and I've added uh, a matinee sequence that you can find in a previous tutorial and that's just basically with a door open, the two doors opening with a camera focusing on them just so that the, the player can see where they are in relation to where the bot is and then you can start jumping out and firing and it just gives a bit more direction to the scene. In here I've got a use trigger, so this trigger gets used, uh, the door drops and the bot comes through the door, so that's set up. We'll also get, get the bot to spawn uh, when the trigger is pressed rather from level loaded, uh, so we'll just hook that up there. And that just allows the player to see the bot come into this, the scene and then start firing at the player. Okay, so we'll just move that into place. And also remember to uncheck Aim to Interact if you had those already selected. So now we need to give the player a bit of direction, give him a, a mission to get through this section. So what I'll do is I'll right click in Kismet, I'll go to New Action, go to Voice Announcement, and go to Play Announcement, okay? And I'll hook that up into the Use Trigger. Okay, and what this can do is this, this, this node can display a message onto the screen about uh, any information you want to convey to the player. So I'll just put uh, kill Johnny to uh, continue. Okay, so this gives the player uh, a message about killing the bot uh, in order to get, get to the next area. Okay, um, if you are in, use your world properties here, and if you are in default game, UT game, these announcements will work. But if you use uh, any other game type that isn't uh, a UT uh, derived game type, then these announcements won't work. So if you did want to use a different game type, you can always use a log, which you hold down L and left click, and you can plug that into there, and you can always log a message to the screen. Uh, but for the UT game, uh, announcements are the best way to do that. So next up, uh, we'll We'll change the gameplay up a little bit here by um, giving the player an end um, scenario. So we'll create another remote event by holding down R and left clicking. And here I'll type in death. Okay, on the new remote event. That's just holding down R and left clicking. And then we'll move this sequence out of the way. So we've hooked that up onto the finished. And here we can decide what, like when the bot dies, what are we going to do? What event are we going to fire off here? So before anything else, we need a new action, go to event and attach to event, and we'll hook that up there. And then under events, we'll right click, go to new event, pawn, and death, okay? And now because we got an attached to event, we can hook this straight into death, and it'll hook up to that event there. And, and we need an attachee and an instigator. And in this case, since we named the guy coming off this actor factory bot in the variable, we'll create a new named variable by holding down N on the keyboard and left clicking. We'll change this by name to bot and we'll hook the instigator and the attachee up to there. So now when the bot dies, we can fire off something. Uh, in this case, I've got another door to exit the level, so I'll just um, fire off uh, this matinee here by holding down M and left clicking and then I'll just create a quick door event here and I'll just open it really quickly I'll drag the time slider down okay so that's just a really quick door matinee track and we can hook that up to up to play and we'll also play a sound when the the bot dies as well so we'll hold down s to create a sound and in our content browser uh, in udk game i've got my sound cues selected here and i'll just type in death in the search box and it gives you um, a few different death sounds that you can play so i've just gone for a stinger go down play death zero one and i'll just plug that into the sound okay and hook that into death again. And so now when, when the bot dies, it will open the door and play a sound to you know let the player know that the bot is dead. Okay, so now we've got the start start mission here. 
which is kill kill Johnny to continue, and this bot will be Johnny. Okay, and then when Johnny dies, we can open the door and play a sound to let the player know that he's died. A couple of things that I did want to change in here is that I had to keep turning on God mode to kill kill the bot Johnny, and it, it was quite a quite a hard sequence to do. So if you look for your trace, um, we can change a few properties in here to make it a little bit easier for the player. So the initial trace doesn't really need changing because this is just detecting whether the bot can see the player or not. Uh, and then when we start firing at, when, well, when the bot starts firing at us, he'll shoot at us for one second and then he'll stop firing. So one second of shooting isn't too bad. I think the main delay that needs changing here is this one between stop firing and the next trace. And this means that when he stops firing, how long does it take to start firing again? So instead of keeping it at 0.25, I'm just going to ramp this right up to 2 so you can really see the difference um, of what it makes. Uh, another thing that I want to do is here where we are logging the, the health of Johnny, it's doing it every 0.5 seconds and it's kind of spamming our screen with uh, too much information that we don't really need every 0.5 of a second. So on this in output, just hover over it and hold down D and it'll create another delay inside there and instead of one second, I might even have it of every two seconds again. And this will just display the log uh, of the health that we set up before every two seconds. Right. Another thing that we can do is give it a bit more personality. We can actually um, give a name of the bot next to the health so that we know exactly whose health is being affected. So if we just right click on this log, expose variable and create a string, we can right click and create new string variable if we call this Johnny, it'll log, John, this will write something on the screen called Johnny and then it'll say his health next to it. So let's just go in and test this out for now. We'll go inside this room here so when we press this um, trigger, the two doors will open. Johnny will spawn out of here, start running around firing at us but only every two seconds and then when we kill him, this door over here should open. So we'll go and test that out now. So Johnny isn't spawned at the moment, as we can see there's no health being displayed to the screen. As soon as we go and press this, we've got a message on the screen, Johnny appears, he's jumping down, he doesn't pick up the rocket launcher, he's only firing at us every two seconds, and then when we kill him, the door opens and we can continue. So that setup works. And as you could see on the screen then, Johnny's health was being displayed. Uh, another way to display um, a person's name or a bot's name uh, would be to actually get the pawn class from here. And uh, we've got a pawn class UT pawn. So if you had your own custom pawn classes, this is just for people that are scripting their own pawns. Uh, we can actually display the pawn class to the screen by um, converting the pawn class to uh, a string. So we can go to new action, misc, convert to string. And if we hook this up from the delay here and to the in, and the output would be this string variable here. And instead of naming him Johnny, we'll just cancel that out. So it's just an empty, empty variable there. Alternatively, you can right click here and just create a new string and then hook that up there, it does the same thing. And then the input will be this bot here that's respawned from the actor factory over there. So we could just use this one or we can create a new named variable, it's up to you. Just for simplicity, I'll just hook that into there. And now when we play, it should say UT pawn on the screen. Okay, so we got our own pawn class being um, projected onto the screen and that, that works fine. So that just helps you out if you wanted to output your custom pawn class to the screen. For this case though, I'll just delete the convert to string and I'll just keep this uh, uh, Johnny. Okay, so Johnny spawns and then we've got our tray set up. We've got a two second delay on stop firing. So this, this will be your difficulty 
This will be a difficulty um, delay there. Uh, you ramp it up or bring it down in order to how hard you want the bot to be to kill. Uh, we've still got our move too. We didn't, don't really need to change anything there because all the move properties are fine. Uh, we've got our two remote events. We've got healing uh, the bot and the death. We can just comment this by holding down control alt and um, when Johnny dies. So when he dies, we open the door into the next area. So you could even take away the rocket launcher from the player or you could give the player 100% health if they've lost any. Anything like that you can set up from this death event. It's completely up to you how you go about doing that. Uh, we've got our boss bottle here, which we've uh, exposed a string and given uh, the bot a name so that the player know who, who's, who they're killing. And we've also added a mission for the player, you know, to tell them to kill this bot to continue uh, through the game. So that's a nice little set. We'll just clean this up a bit. We'll um, highlight these and create a new sequence. Uh, Johnny Death. And we'll also put this into a subsequence. Just in case we want to add any more to those, so it just cleans things up a bit. And this trace we can put into a sequence. Right click, create new sequence, trace. And because we got an input here, this sequence will be called trace, but it'll say auto in. So if we double click on that sequence, and we go to sequence activated. This is just basically like a remote event coming into the sequence, so nothing has changed there. But if we change this label to trace, then we know that it's going into the trace. And if we come back out of there, uh, you can either use your mouse buttons to go in and out, or you can uh, use these arrows to go through subsequences, or alternatively select them from down here. Uh, but now we see this input has changed to trace. We can do the same for this one. Right click. Okay, new subsequence movement. I can put this up there. And the same with movement, we'll double click it. Instead of uh, the input label is auto in, we'll change that to movement. Okay, and it's kind of cleaned things up a bit. Uh, we can leave that as it is. Uh, you can keep organizing and commenting on things that you want. But overall, we've got a bot that spawns. Uh, when the player presses a button, it opens the doors. It gives the player a message of what to do in this area. Uh, the bot spawns. He moves around, uh, going to different locations in the map. Uh, it detects if he can see the player or not. Uh, we continually heal in the bot um, until we pick up the rocket launcher. And then when we pick up the rocket launcher, we can do enough damage to kill him. And then when we kill him, uh, we can open the final door and the player can progress through the level. So that's it for the bot setup. Uh, thanks for watching.